So now the facilities, because this is a big discussion point. Casey Fields. So let's have a look at the presentation, a bit of a fly through of the Casey Fields campus. So just a few more photos that we took this week. Now, just in case you're worried, it didn't take much convincing to get Jake Melcham to get his top off and jump into his Speedos, so he wasn't offended by that. Um, some of these photos here, these, these aquatic recovery pools. Now, anyone that's been involved in elite sports, these are like the magic pools. The recovery, when, when we push the players' bodies in training in the games to the limits that we do and the build-up of lactic acid and the sort of the damage to the tissue that gets done when we push them so hard, these aquatic pools, you just really can't compete. You can't really be at your best. You can't recover quick enough to then keep on working without these. And, and our guys have been trying to make do without it and now this has been something that as soon as they went in there, um, they've now pretty well relocated the majority of pre-season to this location for this reason. Um, so amazing facility. That's the indoor kicking facility. Um, again, I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to go into how important skills and precision delivery is in the game now. Um, and quite often during the year, due to weather or conditions. Um, we can't train at the level we require to have these indoor kicking facilities is some, something that fast tracks that development. And another thing that you may not see as critically important, but at, at Casey, to invest in actually getting the officers right. So even when our coaches were at Casey and training was on, they actually didn't even have, for example, officers um, on windows where they could actually see over training and see what was taking place or any of the meeting rooms. So um, it's, a, it's an amazing setup. Please go out there during the year and um, have a look at it and um, appreciate what the Casey Field campus is. So before I go into Caulfield, just wanted to take a minute to probably answer quite a few questions that come through to me. I think under a little bit of a misunderstanding, like if we end up building a home base at Caulfield, does that mean that we won't be out at Casey? And I just remind everyone, we have four teams. We have a VFL team, an AFL team, a VFLW team, an AFLW team. They all need ovals. They need facilities to be training on and playing on. And we see so many of the teams now, and we look even around us here, say at Richmond, Collingwood, who have got facilities they've built up over years and they've got one ground which they had when they had one team. And they've now either got three or four. And so we've done it in reverse. We've built a magnificent, um, uh, let's call it secondary nearly, um, campus out at Casey Field that performs a really important function for us. That is part of our vision for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So it's not that, that's, that we will continue to invest. That's performing a really important role to us. And we will have the two-campus model. So when I talk about K uh, Caulfield Racecourse Trust, that is about us having access to two ovals. This is what the plans are. This is we're very much at the early stages, talking to the trust, talking to other stakeholders, two ovals in the middle of the track. Obviously, you can't build a multi-storey facility inside the track. Otherwise, some of you guys, while your horses are racing, you won't get to see the full race. You're not allowed to build inside. That'll be on the outside of the track and we'll have access across. 
Um, and that is, a, that is a central point. That is our headquarters. That is for our men's, our women's, our staff, our coaches, our players, our supporters. That's our headquarters meeting place. When you think about that, if we have two ovals there and we have Casey Fields, that's three ovals. So right at the moment, I would admit and put us right at the bottom of the ladder for facilities. Our players and coaches are dealing with being at the bottom of the ladder for facilities compared to other clubs. When we get this up and going and we have a headquarters, a central connection point for the club, we have two ovals, we have a meeting place, we have down the, the road, we've got Casey with the facilities that we've already built now and another oval, that's three ovals. Um, I won't say necessarily we go to the top of the, lat, uh, the ladder, but we'll certainly be right up there in the mix. And I want to touch on why, Caulfield, why we're talking about Caulfield. Because I still get asked, I understand why, I still get asked why don't we just put pressure on the MCC and, and start back here again. And some remember when this was our home ground. 30 years ago or so, we were the only tenant club. We probably had one, maybe two coaches. We probably had a staff of four or five people running the whole club. We trained and played there. We couldn't train or do pre-season during the summer because of cricket. The reality now, I just want to put this on the table because we'd all love this for this to be our home ground. But that is long gone. There's contracts in place where there are multiple clubs, as uh, AFL clubs, as tenant clubs of the MCC. And we won't be able to use that. What we do, this is part of our strategic plan of our facilities. It's Casey Fields, it's hopefully Caulfield, and it's the MCG. Because most of you, the majority of your connection, your experience of being a Melbourne supporter is here at the MCG watching games, engaging with each other, engaging with the players. That's why that's so important. That's why we put so much effort into making sure that we play 14 games next year. We play the maximum amount of games. So you can come and watch it here. But we're not... It's impossible to think that we're going to be training and playing four teams at the MCG. So I, I just want to because it does come up quite a bit. And at Amy, it's also a fantastic location and a fantastic precinct. And it's so good, you've got a whole lot of other clubs and you've got a whole lot of other activity in that precinct. And that would cause us to compromise our facilities and therefore our programs, and we refuse to do that. So victory, storm, rebels, more and more concerts. Our training would be only one oval, four teams. So that would be a completely compromised program and as we work through this with the coaches and the players, we promise them we're not only going to build a magnificent state-of-the-art high-performance centre, we're going to build in growth so that the facility and the space and the precinct can grow with us and our demands. I don't even know what the demands on the Melbourne Footy Club are going to be in 30, 40, 50 years. That's why we need space. So some other CEO can see that and capitalise on it. There wouldn't be too many other AFL clubs that are going to have the scope to do that. And th these are all the priorities. So when we look at Amy, Amy would be compromised before we open the doors let alone in five years, 10 years, 15 years. Really important to understand that. We would, we, we would have to be fitting in with other elite codes. Elite codes that are classed as primary tenants because they play in that stadium in MOPT and they bring money to the precinct. We're not a primary tenant. We don't play in that stadium. So I, I just want to... There's a lot of questions... And I just want to say, we've explored every option. Trust me, this board, Kate, David's been with the club 
100 years. We've, we've explored every op in the whole of Melbourne. So when people say, I've heard of a ground or I know there's a couple of paddocks or I've, I've, I reckon we could... It's either privately owned, owned by the councils, owned by the state government, and we've had those conversations. But there's not too many blocks of land that can actually take the facilities required for four teams and two to three ovals. So when someone tells me they drove past an area of Port Melbourne or Malvern or something, and those areas, they're, they're, trust me, they've been explored. And I think Kate actually threw out last year at the AGM, if anyone knows of a block that is big enough to do that, please let us know. But we work with the AFL. We work with the state government. They have trust organisations like MOPT and the Caulfield Race Trust that are there to manage those areas of land on behalf of the state government. We work directly with them. So I, I, I just want everyone to have the confidence that every option has been explored. And in the same way, when we talk to the Racecourse Trust and we're really clear on what are the requirements of our whole club, that we would not even be in this position if we didn't think we could look at that site and we could not only deliver a high performance environment but a great club headquarters. But just as important as that, and I want to put this on the table because you're going to hear a lot about this, for us to be a benchmark, best in the sporting industry, partner with the community, local sporting clubs, local sporting organisations. When you go out and you look at a, a footprint of the Caulfield Racecourse, it's far bigger than what our requirements are. We want to be part of an amazing multi-sport community precinct where individuals, teams and organisations in the whole Glenire area and even broader can share in our elite facilities. That doesn't take away, that will add to what we bring, um, but also if we can help that precinct that is being, um, I can tell you now, is being a feasibility separate to our project, a feasibility on that whole broader community footprint is being done at the same time. And uh, it's hard because we don't, it's very early stages, but I can tell you now, the early conversations, the early visions for that precinct and you can go online to the Caulfield Racecourse Trust website and get some of their thoughts about what they're wanting to do with the broader uh, precinct. And it would be something that would be amazing for us to be part of, and I think we can really add some value to it as well. So a two-campus vision for our facilities, and I'm not going to call the MCG a campus, but I will say it's a two-campus strategy but as a facility, we have a third pillar, and that is an absolute commitment to our time, our facilities, our access, your experience at the MCG. We want to make sure that forever um, that's a magnificent experience.